Welcome back to Five Talk Street. I'm Vince Sims. Our nation has been under great stress from racial tension. Unfortunately, the cry to end the inequality and injustice is not new to our country. Our next guest is Judge L. Clifford Davis. He was born in 1924 in Wilton, Arkansas, to two successful farmers and the youngest of seven children. The importance of education was instilled in him at a very young age. However, education for a black man was not easy to achieve. In the 1950s, Judge Davis was a true pioneer. He was the first black lawyer in Fort Worth to own his own law practice. As a long, young lawyer for the Fort Worth NAACP, Judge Davis filed and won lawsuits to desegregate the Mansfield ISD and the Fort Worth ISD, which resulted in the desegregation of both school districts. Chris Howell, president of Chris Howell Communications, talks to Judge Davis about then and now. Thank you. Well, I'm joined today by the Honorable Judge L. Clifford Davis today. This is a man who has spent his lifetime fighting for equality and justice for all. Judge Davis, thank you so much for being with us today. It's a pleasure to be with you. Absolutely, sir. Let's talk about 1955, because it was in 1955 that you filed a lawsuit to desegregate Mansfield ISD. Uh, let's talk about that, that particular case, because it was one that had to actually go to the United States Appeals Court. Well, in those days, uh, I am Terrell High School was the only high school in Tarrant County for black people. So the kids that lived in Arlington and Mansfield and Grapevine and in West Tarrant County uh, and all of Fort Worth had to go to I am Terrell. Now, Grapevine and, and Arlington would provide transportation, but Mansfield would not provide transportation. So the kids who lived down there and finished the eighth grade, if they wanted to go further than that, had to manage to get to some place the best way they could. So they would have to, uh, if they were trying to go to Terrell, get up in their home out in the country and walk downtown and catch the uh, public trailway bus that came through on its schedule and get off its downtown bus station for the Greyhound or Trailway bus, whichever one they were riding, and then get to Terrell, either walk across the railroad tracks to get to Terrell or ride the public transportation to get to Terrell. So the, the, the parents down there asked the local school board down there to provide transportation to the students at their, at their school expense and for some improvements in the elementary school that was operated in Mansfield for black people. And the school board rejected all of their requests. Their simple requests. So I was here practicing law and they came to consult with me about it. And I did file suit to integrate. <clears throat> and the trial court here, the judge denied me relief we appealed it to the Fifth Circuit in, in uh, New Orleans, and uh, the judge here was ordered to integrate the schools in an integration order in the case. So in 56, when the school <clears throat> scheduled to open in 56, we would have been ready to go. Yes, yes. Well, Judge, no doubt we have certainly made some strides in some areas, uh, education being one of those areas where we made some strides. But as we look at today, uh, with all of, uh, we find ourselves today and again in the streets protesting uh, for equal justice in the courtroom and for uh, justice to not be tried on the street in terms of African-American men being killed by police officers, things of this nature that we continue to see today. What are your thoughts uh, as you look today and see all of the things that are going on and how it may compare to when you, again, were fighting for justice for all? I mean, we put, we put uh, a lot of fault on the officers, and it's justified in doing so. But the judiciary and the prosecution is looking the other way. They have a responsibility to do their duty and see to it that those who are doing wrong are punished and not let the person do anything then come up and tell any kind of lie and it's accepted. Mm -hmm. You see, the judiciary needs to start being certain 
that these cases are properly prosecuted. Judge, what what, what would you say? Uh, I, I certainly voting is a way because a lot of these individuals are elected. What, what, what else could we do to ensure that we hold those individuals accountable? Because like you pointed out, we talk so much about the officers, but again, it's the prosecutors and things of that nature who are not fouling the charges that should be fouled. One, we need to vote and let during the election process, it be known what our concerns are so that we vote for a person who commits to address those concerns. Mm -hmm. And we vote out of office folks who are not addressing those concerns. Yeah. That's the importance of vote. We need to go to city council. We need to go to commissioner's court. We need to uh, <clears throat> have people go down to the courthouse and sit around and observe every once in a while uh, what's going on in the courtroom so that the judges will know that the citizens are interested in what's going on down to the courthouse mm -hmm. in the civil and the criminal side, you see. What word of encouragement, advice, uh, or what have you, would you give to the young men and women who are, again, fighting the same fight today that you fought many years ago, uh, again, for this right of equal justice for all, uh, all minorities, as you pointed out a moment ago? We've got to enter into the, an attitude in the community that we are all working actually for the same thing. We're working for the general welfare of the community. And the general welfare of the community requires that everyone in the community have a fair opportunity to contribute to the general welfare activities to the extent of his energy and his ability without regard to his age, race, economic status, economic, economic status, educational status, what have you. He can still be positive force in the community and respect for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I tried to live that. Well, Judge Clifford L. Davis, thank you so much for uh, spending time with us and just sharing your perspective in terms of uh, what we see going on today. And again, thank you for helping to remind us that, again, it is about the general welfare of the community. And as a community, we come together to rally for one another and extending that respect and courtesy uh, to one another as well. So once again, thank you so much for being with us. And to you, thank you for watching today. Stay with us. More Five Talk Street. In just a